FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Faux Mondays, the companion show to FOMO Sapiens. We will, of course, be back on Thursday with another exciting guest this week. It is Jerry Colonna, who is a really big figure in the world of coaching. He is the founder of a company called Reboot. He has a podcast called Reboot, Total Rockstar. So that'll be a fascinating conversation. But I put on my coach's hat this week and do a little FOMO therapy with last week's guest, Melinda Ahrens. Now, you remember that Melinda is this very accomplished media storyteller, narrative shaper, worked for Facebook, Hillary for America, the Jan 6 committee hearings, all these different places. So she's she gets things done. It's not that she's paralyzed, but she does a lot of things. And she confessed to me in our conversation, which we had at my apartment. It was more of a low key one because we're friends from college. She confessed to me that, you know, she thinks a lot about FOMO. So we got into FOMO, a little FOMO therapy and we talked about it in some depth. And so what I wanted to do was just roll that tape because it's a fantastic conversation where we just get into it. So enjoy it. I think it's great that Melinda was so vulnerable with me talking about her FOMO and uh, hopefully you will hear yourself perhaps in some of this and get some tips on how to deal with your own FOMO. All right, everybody enjoy the show. FOMO. Okay. So I want to, I want to take this as we end towards the topic of FOMO, because you, when we, whenever we <laughs> chat, you always talk about that you have a very direct relationship with FOMO. And so, you know, you are a FOMO sapiens, which is, and you've been very successful. And so like, you know, FOMO sapiens, what are they? The people who don't do the treadmill, we do our own path, but mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a little much, uh, at least in my life. Yep. Talk about that. Talk about FOMO and you. I suffer from intense FOMO. <laughs> It is a major theme in my life. My, when I got our mutual friend uh, Mia, who you know, um, when I got my dog, uh, recommended that Edgar. I name Edgar. Our dog is Edgar. My, my dog is named Edgar, and she recommended I name him FOMO. Ah, I would have charged you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am a, a FOMO. Um, I'm very familiar with it. Um, I mean, where do I start? I guess I, I think in, I think it's had both a positive and negative mm. effect on my life. I still struggle. I mean, I really do struggle with it. I really, mm. I really do, um, you know, talk about it in therapy and try to be more present because I don't want to constantly feel like, oh, but if I do this thing, I don't get to do that thing. Um, I think the positive aspect of it is, is definitely led me to say yes to so many things that if I didn't suffer from FOMO, I probably wouldn't have. And I've, you know, have no regrets about um, a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it actually just came up. I was just thinking about this on the way here. I I was invited to a conference in March in Abu Dhabi. And at first I said no. And then I got FOMO. I really, I just got FOMO. I like, I, you know, friends were telling me they were going. I was getting sort of peer pressured from other people going. And at first I, it just felt very exhausting and overwhelming. And then I sort of looked at it and I got excited about it. And I added on a personal trip and stopped in Europe on the way home. And, you know, look, at the end of the day, it, I will, I can't tell a lie. Like the day before the flight, I was like, what am I doing? Mm. I'm so stressed. I'm exhausted. Why am I doing this to myself? I do not feel like getting on a 12 hour flight. Um, but in the end, I was like super happy I went. And, you know, I think if I didn't suffer from FOMO, there's many jobs, many opportunities, many experiences I would have turned down um, and said no to. There's also the sort of you know, dark side of FOMO, which is, you know, I want to be present. I want to be happy in the life I'm living. I want to feel present in that moment. And FOMO sort of robs you of that. If you're constantly yeah. feeling like, well, but I should be doing this, you know, that's, the, I don't think that's a great way to go through life. And that's the, that's the part that I struggle with. Does that make sense? Yeah. And in fact, I have, if you, so where am I apartment taping? Um, if you look at my wall over there by my desk, I just put that there this morning. I okay. came up with this new 
FOMO formula, which is Love it. it's an if then statement, like an Excel, but it's my big problem. What I figured out yeah. recently, cause like, listen, I struggled too. I get it where you and I are very similar mm-hmm. is that when I, somebody invites me to something, I get all excited mm-hmm. and I, and I'll say yes. Right. Before I have done two things. Number one is I need to find, I need to think about the value of that thing in terms of present value. I start to think about like, what if I meet somebody there yep. who gives me all kinds of Bitcoin and then all of a sudden I'm post stacking <laughs> whatever. Like, so I have all these, I, I'll, I'll invent all these things in my head about that potential opportunity, but I need to sort of like a finance person find the present value of what's realistic. Like, yeah. okay, what really could this be? Well, I have to be hard nosed about that. That's the A. The B is I never think about the trade off. Okay, if I yeah. go to if I go to Abu Dhabi, which you know Abu Dhabi was great, go one time, see the Grand Mosque, get out of there. Um, no offense, Abu Dhabi, but you know it's just it's 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 fine. They're gonna be mad at you. They're it's, gonna call it's, you. They have very good food, but anyway, if you um, if you if you think about the trade off of like, okay, well, I'm going on this flight, and or you know, or I'm going to this party tonight, but I could go you know, do something healthy, cook at home, spend time with family, whatever it is. Yeah. I never think about that what I'm giving up. And so now what I'm trying to do is this new sort of if then is like, if the present value of this opportunity is greater than sort of normal life, mm-hmm. that's great. Then go ahead and do it. If not, then don't do it. And so it's, I'm starting to think, and I also wait a day before saying yeah. yes to anything. That's really smart. I'm trying, listen, this is my new thing. <sighs> 2023, baby. God, that's great. I have a very interesting, not to go like to- Go. Not to go like too inside therapy, mm. but I feel like maybe if I share this insight, it will help. Yes. I think if people listen to FOMO Sapiens, they probably have a relationship with FOMO they themselves. <laughs> so this is really interesting. I have no idea if it's real, like who knows with, with these things. But my therapist said that a lot of adult children of divorce suffer from really intense FOMO which could be because if you if your parents divorce when you're young and you split time between two households imbued in you is a sense of missing out on the other house so if you're at your mom's you're missing your dad if you're a dad you're missing your mom and i don't know if that's true at all like there's no way to ever know if these things you know you can't draw a straight line but that totally resonated with me yeah. where i am like i don't but i don't know like maybe if i had you know parents in the same household and I, I had a very, I mean, I did have a very stable childhood yeah, even with divorced parents. So like, it's not, it's My nothing against them. My parents are married them. and I still have tons of FOMO, but well, I, so I get your point. the thing is like, maybe it would have made zero difference, but I thought that was such an interesting theory. FOMO. FOMO. It's everybody must have their trigger. Cause like, I think about, you know, you grew up in the DC area, right? So yeah. you had, I grew up in a small town where like, although literally, I grew up in very suburban, it's not okay. like we, it was not cosmopolitan at all. It was very okay. suburban. We but, never went into the city. Okay. Well, yeah. then fine. You're like, I, I was like, there's a whole world out there happening. And I'm like, you know, I'm like on a trail walking down and which is nice, by the way, I love the trails, yeah. but it was just like the, I, I was, I had a plan yeah. that like, I want to go to these places. I was like a Disney And hero. you've done that. Yeah, but I still have the FOMO. And so yeah. I think part of it is that people like us, when we when we are asked to do things, we're given opportunities, I think A is we we tend to get excited. Yes. And therefore for sure. we attribute value to things that maybe don't deserve that much value. Yeah, it's really interesting. I I I I do wish that I I will say this. It it's something that I've noticed that's been really, really interesting. What was your experience with FOMO during the pandemic? Because for me, it was so, it was, it was like extremely liberating. I mean, look, I hated the pandemic and I'm obviously an incredibly social person and that was not great, but I will say that it was like, there was, because there was nothing happening and it was this forced global hard stop, part of it was really, really liberating. Like I've just like never sat and done more or less nothing Mm -hmm. for this long. Then I felt like I hit kind of a nice balance between where where you might say for a hot second I was quote normal. <laughs> <laughs> and now I feel like in the sort of post COVID comeback, it's like my FOMO is back with a vengeance, which is what what I think goes to that Abu Dhabi trip. I was really exhausted. I'd had like a medical thing. Like I, mm. you know, I wasn't really ready to like hit the ground running, but then I feel like it was like FOMO came back like COVID post COVID revenge. And I wanted to like see the world. And again, I don't regret it. It was like the most, it was a fantastic trip. 
And I'm really glad I went on that trip. But it was um, it was FOMO driven for sure. And I just I don't know. Did you have an experience with the pandemic? Yeah. So when the pandemic hit, I remember because we used to be neighbors too. we lived yeah. in the same neighborhood. I made a stack of all the books that I had bought because I I mean, if you, you, you guys, anybody who listening, ever you when, when you come over the house, if you ever do and you're always welcome, you'll see I have a lot of books. I love books. And so I had a lot of books I hadn't read and I stacked them all up and I started with Midnight at Chernobyl. Mm. Not a great book to read during a pandemic. <laughs> OK, it's like it's super depressing, but it's a very good book. So anyway, I started reading and then by like day and, and I did read for like a week or two. I was like, this is awesome. I'm reading and I am watching Succession, which I had never seen. And I'm meditating and like I because I was I think we all were like, this is a two week thing and then we'll be yep. out. Right. <sighs> OK, then unfortunately, my book was coming out. And so I was oh. heads down on that. And then but that then it was like people were like, this is inappropriate. So the whole book thing was kind of stressful and terrible. But then I did have this moment, like two weeks of like I loved it and the slowdown and I was, quote unquote, normal. And then what I realized was. Like I really missed life yeah. and living life. And so I, like you, when things resumed, I way overcorrected and I was basically like a madman. Yeah. And I have, I, then I kind of have gone, it's weird because like though I don't have the stamina for the cray and the way I used to. So like, no, me neither. I, I don't have the stamina. And when I travel now, I get like much more anxious, like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. So yeah. I don't know where it's going to shake out because it's, I still have like the mental parts of it, but I also loved the balance yeah. and I felt much better. I felt, I felt great. So I think it's that combo of, Hey, for me, it's all about that formula and like just being better about not assuming every random thing is going to generate some golden ticket. Yeah. I think what's so tricky about it is that, you know, oftentimes you're absolutely right, but oftentimes those things do generate, you know, I have many yeah. moments when I think, well, what if I hadn't done what if I hadn't gone to that party? I wouldn't have met this person. What if I hadn't gone to that dinner? I wouldn't have met, you know, and and I look, that's part of the joy of living in New York, yeah. but it's also very tempting. You know, New York is I've li I don't know about you, but I I've, you know, lived in New York since college with stints, Damn. though, mm. in D.C. and L.A. for mm. several years at a time. And I always end up coming back to New York. And it's all about the people. It's not that D.C. and L.A. doesn't have incredible, brilliant, wonderfully talented people. It absolutely does. And I have dear, dear friends in both. But I just don't think you on a regular, almost constant basis, meet amazing people the way that you do in New York City. It just, it just attracts incredible humans. And as a result, you do have that kind of like, well, I should probably just stay in tonight instead of going to that random dinner I got invited to. But like, sometimes you get home and you're like, God, that was two hours of my life, I'll never get back. But sometimes you really do have a formative experience there. And it's hard to... This is this is the struggle. Well, this, this is, is the struggle is real. This is and what I think the if, just to, to put a fine tip on it, fine point on it, and then uh, you know from where I've been evolving is that I have become better now at sussing out whether or not I think something will be special. Yeah. So like it used to, you know somebody invites me to something that ten years ago might have seemed very exciting, and I remember I'll be like, oh, I went to something like that and I was bored or whatever. Yeah. I'm better at saying no. And I'm also better at like when I get there, if it's kind of lame, I'll just make my exit. And yeah. so that's helpful. Yeah. Just cutting your losses. Yeah. I would say I am much better about time alone. I think I used to feel pre pandemic, like if I don't have, you know, something fabulous going on on like a Friday night, mm. I, you know, I got to rustle that up. And now I'm like, I am completely happy to just be home and, yeah. you know, watching TV and chilling with the dog. That, that's a big change that ha has, in fact, stayed with me, which I'm, you know, pretty grateful for. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 